Hey, good Friday, everybody. Welcome back. Hopefully, we're having a wonderful end of the week out there, and hopefully, had a productive week. And uh, unfortunately, again, a bit of a heavy week on the heart due to everything that occurred with Helene. Uh, and it's probably going to be that way for a while, unfortunately, as we continue to get more footage out of the mountains of North Carolina. But uh, we do have other concerning areas of weather that we do need to talk about today, including the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and let me tell you, it's really been a seesaw in the models back and forth. Uh, you know, a couple of days ago, it looked like something might develop into a storm. Then a day or two ago, it kind of downtrended back to nothing. And then yesterday, it kind of uptrended back to maybe something. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about it. I'm going to tell you why it's a difficult forecast and kind of still what the range of possibilities are. But either way, expecting impacts through much of the state of Florida here. Uh, with that storm system, also monitoring a big time cold front that could sweep on through the country here uh, going through uh, kind of uh, early next week. And then we'll kind of talk about how long that fall like pattern could last or if we're going to switch back to summer for a little while or kind of what we're thinking in the long run. All right, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Uh, like the video, comment, let me know where you're watching from, and consider sharing the video with somebody that you think might find it useful here uh, in some areas that are likely to be impacted by uh, some impactful weather. So uh, let's go ahead and dive on into things. Now, a current look at satellite here, and uh, you'll notice uh, a couple things right off the bat. Major Hurricane Kirk, a Category 4 storm, and I mentioned a day or two ago that it very well could get there. Sure enough, it has behind that tropical storm, Leslie. Uh, and then this big area of thunderstorm activity into the Gulf of Mexico. So the tropics are plenty active enough, uh, but the question is how much of this is actually going to impact us here in the United States? Uh, and uh, go ahead and give you a little spoiler alert, probably only that Gulf system, uh, which is obviously good news. Now, we'll take a look Excuse me, at the um, latest uh, from the National Hurricane Center, and you'll note here that we do have a couple areas uh, that uh, are kind of popping up, just like we looked at on satellite. Kirk, uh, again, a 145 mile an hour hurricane with pressure down near 934. That makes it the second strongest storm we've seen uh, so far this hurricane season, right behind Barrel that we had uh, that reached major Category 5 status. Now, uh, down behind that, Leslie, a 60 mile an hour tropical storm, pressure around 997. Uh, so uh, again, an active scene in the main development region, which is kind of flipped from what you would expect. Normally, September is very active in the main development region. Uh, I should say August and September, and then uh, it kind of dies off in October. We kind of did the opposite this year. It was quiet much, uh, much of the year and then picked up here at the end. So it just goes to show you never know exactly what's going to happen in hurricane season. But the other area we're watching uh, is this area in the Gulf of Mexico sitting at a 40% chance of uh, development here within the next seven days. Uh, and this is actually up a little bit from yesterday. Yesterday, they dropped it down to 30. Today, they brought it back up to 40. Uh, so this area has been hanging in that range of 30 to 50% chance of development uh, and really sitting right in the middle of that range right now at 40%. We're going to talk about it, but before we do, uh, let's briefly talk about the main development region, kind of what we're seeing out this way. Now, this is, again, major Hurricane Kirk, and Kirk's not going to be a problem, but boy, oh boy, what a storm out here. I mean, this is a big-time system. Uh, we're very lucky that this one is not coming to the United States or anywhere, uh, for that matter. Uh, but uh, again, just a very impressive, very powerful hurricane underwent rapid intensification yet, uh, yesterday, which uh, seems like a pretty familiar word at this point with the past couple of hurricane seasons. Uh, we've had a lot of storms kind of take this uh, approach to developing, uh, and Kirk was no different. Uh, again, though, the good news for us here, or really anybody that's watching this, is we'll go ahead and move the models ahead into time. Uh, again, just to give you an idea where we're looking, this is Kirk, this is Leslie behind it, this is Puerto Rico, uh, Hispaniola, and then uh, the Antilles here. Uh, so again, that's kind of where everything is on the map. Uh, but let's move this ahead into time, and you'll notice Kirk just continues moving out to sea. And by the time we get to early next week, this is Monday, Kirk is out of the frame here uh, and well up into the North Atlantic. Now, it could be something to watch for our friends up into Europe. Uh, we'll, uh, you know, definitely, I would take note of that and kind of check your local weather sources there, whether you're in the United Kingdom or Ireland or, uh, you know, anywhere in that part of the world. Uh, but specifically talking about North America here, again, Kirk, not going to be a problem. Now, Leslie behind it, what about Leslie? Well, you'll notice this is, again, this coming Monday afternoon. Uh, Eastern time at least, uh, and uh, you'll notice the storm continues to strengthen, but just like uh, Kirk takes a path out to sea and likely not getting quite as strong as Kirk, uh, I still do expect a hurricane out of that storm, but not going to see uh, 150, 140 mile an hour hurricane, I don't think, uh, out of this one as Kirk has kind of, you know, uh, ruffled the environment out ahead of the storm just a little bit. 
The good news, uh, yesterday we had a lot of Euro ensembles that were a little bit further south towards the Antilles. Overnight and into today, they've all pulled northward, and just about all of these members uh, take this storm well out to sea. You will note another storm behind it, uh, but that's well out in the time, and uh, that one you know, has a lot of members that kind of hook out to sea as well. So uh, we'll watch it, but again, the main development region active, but not a problem, and that's what we like to see. Uh, is really lacking any sort of concern there. So uh, definitely good news for us here into the lower 48 and really anywhere into the Caribbean uh, or Central America. All right, our area in the Gulf. Now this one, I'll tell you, it has been a bit of a nightmare to forecast here. Again, it has been back and forth on the models. Uh, currently, it's still just a bunch of shower activity and storm activity into the Bay of Campeche and really spreading through much of the Gulf of Mexico. Um, but yesterday, the models threw a little bit of a wrench in the forecast. Uh, I don't think a lot of people maybe were expecting, uh, myself included, I will add. Uh, we briefly had a tropical depression form down here into the Pacific, just south of Mexico. And uh, this is for vorticity yesterday afternoon. Uh, so again, this is not current. This is yesterday afternoon. And you'll note, here's that spin. This was uh, tropical depression 11, I believe. And then to the node, you'll notice here's kind of our open wave uh, with a little bit of spin from our uh, area to watch in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, this is this is going to be interesting because we looked at the hurricane models yesterday. Well, I say we, we did not. I did after the fact, uh, after the storm formed. And what a lot of them wanted to do was pull this piece of vorticity up into the Gulf uh, and kind of enhance our already broad spin into the Bay of Campeche and developed it into a named storm here uh, and then had a much stronger system working towards Florida compared to what the models uh, 48 hours or uh, so ago were showing. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that here. And unfortunately for us, the system died out. So we're no longer getting hurricane model runs on it anymore. We're back to just having global models. Uh, so it, it truly was a bit of a, a strange kind of wrench in the plans here. Uh, but the global models, you know, generally can handle this pretty well. And here's the latest GFS. Uh, again, pulls that vorticity north from the Pacific into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and you'll notice here it is. Again, it's really small, but we do have this little area of enhanced spin uh, and it does try to develop on the GFS, but again, like previous model runs, just doesn't quite do it. And we still going into early next week, just have this really broad area of vorticity uh, that is kind of showing up uh, with this cyclonic vorticity. Uh, and then again, just kind of hangs out around Florida and doesn't truly develop into a storm. Uh, it's just kind of this big, broad, messy, open wave. Now, that is not the only model, though. The European, a little bit different here, uh, and we'll back this up a little bit so I can show you the same process. Uh, again, watch that vorticity in the Pacific. Watch it pull north and stretch up into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, and the European actually managed to kind of develop this into a storm system here uh, into the coming week. You'll notice we do have those uh, you know, vorticity numbers increasing, isobars becoming much more rounded and closed off. And by Tuesday afternoon, we have a storm system here, uh, albeit not a very strong one, but a storm system just north of the Yucatan uh, Peninsula there and working towards southwest Florida here and even strengthening a little bit before making some sort of landfall near Fort Myers, uh, the Keys or Tampa, that general area by the middle of next week. This would be Wednesday afternoon uh, and then crosses uh, into the Atlantic Ocean and then kind of dies out. Uh, into the Western Atlantic. So uh, it's uh, it's something to watch, and I'll show you what this looks like on our uh, pressure map at the surface, and you'll notice, yeah, here we go. This is a storm system. I mean, 998 millibars, closed low, uh, and making landfall as a tropical storm here into South Florida during the middle of the week ahead, uh, and then not really losing any steam as uh, it kind of crosses right over all the swamps in Lake Okeechobee, uh, and then gets into the Atlantic and kind of dies out due to some wind shear and the front that works on through uh, about a week or so from now. So again, it's um, it's worth noting, and I'll add, the ensembles have kind of upticked with this a little bit as well. These are the GFS ensembles, um, and notice again, a lot of members now with this idea of this working over Florida, which was pretty much you know set in stone anyway, uh, but we do have some stronger members now. We've got a couple in here getting up to upper tropical storm, low end hurricane strength, uh, and again, that's not the only model that does it. We'll take a look at the European model, uh, and a much more concerning look here with the European, I would say, with uh, a lot more members, again, uh, getting this into stronger system territory with landfall somewhere from the Keys uh, up generally towards the Tampa Bay area, even maybe up towards 
uh, the Steenhatchee area of Florida, kind of in that stretch of coastline. So uh, that's that's what the models are showing. My forecast hasn't changed all that much. I would bump up the chances of development a little bit just due to the changes in models. Um, but we'll really just have to wait and see. It would be great if this was an invest. We could get more hurricane model data on whether it develops, uh, but it doesn't get tagged an invest unless the National Hurricane Center thinks it has uh, a high probability of developing uh, and you know impacting people directly. So um, we'll see if it gets that designation, but definitely kind of a, an interesting look at the models um, and uh, you know something something worth noting here, and we'll continue to watch it. But I would say the chances of a tropical storm have definitely increased. Uh, but one thing that has not changed, and I don't think will change, is the main overall threat here, uh, and that's going to be excessive rainfall through the state of Florida. Uh, our latest GFS model here, uh, you'll notice this is starting this weekend. Look at uh, all this rain in the Gulf of Mexico, and what's going to happen? This isn't even the storm, by the way. This is just kind of an embedded. Uh, area of spin along this kind of big, you know, trough that is kind of set up here. Uh, and look at this, just wave of heavy rain. This is early in the week. Uh, and then another wave of heavy rain a day later. And then another wave of heavy rain a day later. Another wave of heavy rain a day later. Uh, and it's just so on and so forth before eventually, hopefully calms down a little bit. But then look at this, picks back up later in the week with heavy rainfall. Uh, so it, it looks like a very rainy pattern for the state of Florida. Wave after wave after wave of rain here uh, over the next week, maybe longer than that. Uh, and that's something we need to watch here for potential flooding concerns. And we'll take a look at the models uh, and you'll note uh, we do have a, uh, a lot of rain showing up on these models. Uh, look at down here. I mean, some of these areas with the GFS bringing 15 to 20 inches of rain over the next 10 days. Uh, again, specifically from Tampa Bay south to the Keys, um, you know, North Florida, the I-10 corridor doesn't look like as big of a deal. And up north through the Carolinas, not a problem at all. Uh, again, I know a lot of people on edge up there. You don't have to worry about this. This is not your storm. This is not your problem. Uh, in fact, you're going to get some nicer weather here in a week or so, uh, probably even less than that, which we'll talk about next. But uh, again, a lot of rain showing up and even the European model, a lot of rain too over the next 10 days, uh, lesser numbers, but still enough that would cause flooding here uh, over the southern portion of the Sunshine State, specifically I-4 corridor south bound uh, is where we are most concerned about this. So um, again, uh, not a whole lot changing, but definitely enough changing that uh, we need to we need to keep an eye on things because uh, any kind of quick development in the Gulf would spell trouble here for the state of Florida. Although either way, I will mention flooding is going to be a threat, but in terms of storm surge and maybe wind, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll need to continue to watch it just in case here. All right, radar current watches morning's advisory is actually a pretty active map this morning. We'll start with rain though, and again, we'll kind of pick up where we left off. Let me move this ahead into time so we are uh, at present time. But uh, again, a lot of rain falling here over portions of the Gulf states, uh, just a lot of moisture down here, and that is going to continue to bring rain here through coastal sections of Texas, through Florida. Uh, even in South Alabama, Georgia, maybe coastal South Carolina could get some rain out of this setup. Uh, north of there, a little bit of a front trying to swing on through portions of the Midwest here. Uh, so you will note some kind of rain popping up here, specifically back in Illinois. We've got a pretty good uh, section of heavy rain here near the Springfield area, back towards Quincy uh, and through the Decatur, Bloomington area of Illinois. So uh, definitely seeing some uh, pretty rainy conditions for a lot of folks up into this part of the country today. Uh, and uh, that will move out of here uh, relatively soon. Uh, but out west, uh, also seeing very active weather. Uh, we'll start here in the Pacific Northwest. We talked about this yesterday. Uh, another front kind of working through here. We've got some rain swinging on through portions of Washington and Oregon. And look at uh, the northern Rockies here. All sorts of watches and warnings. Uh, high wind going to be a threat up here. Red flag warnings for fire danger going to be a threat up here. A big time low pressure system expected to uh, expected to develop into this region uh, and bring a lot of wind and some rain, but mainly a lot of wind is going to be the biggest concern uh, out in that uh, part of the country. Now back towards California, it's hot. It's going to stay hot. Excessive heat warnings in effect for you folks, uh, and we'll need to watch that. And then uh, freeze warnings and frost advisories uh, up into northern Wisconsin, portions of the UP, uh, and into much of Minnesota, which again isn't that uncommon this time of the year. Again, we are getting towards uh, kind of, um, uh, you know, the more wintertime months. So you would expect it to be a little bit cooler anyway. All right, uh, next uh, 48 hours or so, uh, again, pretty rainy here through the Gulf states. We could even see some rain up into the mid-Atlantic, some scattered showers, <clears throat> excuse me, this afternoon could swing on through. So need to watch out for that. 
uh, for sure. Also, kind of an area of some showers trying to swing on through the northeast uh, overnight tonight and into tomorrow. Uh, as again, a bit of a weak front tries to kind of work on through that region. Uh, but after that, getting into Saturday afternoon for college football, pretty clear for most of us here east of the Rockies. Again, through the state of Florida uh, and along the Gulf Coast, I would watch for a couple showers and rumbles of thunder to swing on through. But uh, other than that, high pressure is going to dominate for most of us uh, and keep things pretty nice before you'll notice the start of our next front here uh, beginning to swing on through. This is Saturday evening uh, up into the... Uh, northern portions of Wisconsin and Michigan. Here is our front. You can notice a little bit of a trough showing up, so uh, definitely a cold front of sorts swinging on through, uh, and that will be the start of what will be a nice transition into kind of some more fall-like weather uh, to start the week here, and we can see that pretty well on our 500 millibar uh, height anomaly map. Look at that big area of blue. That's our front swinging on through uh, portions of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and into Michigan, uh, and then eventually kind of dives much further south into the northeast. And this is Tuesday afternoon. Uh, and look at this into Wednesday afternoon, a big pocket of cold air uh, from New York up through Maine, back down towards Massachusetts, uh, Connecticut and Rhode Island. Very cool, uh, very cold core system here. Uh, but uh, you'll even notice some of that blue and some of these lower heights sneaking further south into the southeast. Uh, again, going to help to make things a tad bit cooler. Um, but more importantly, I think than anything else, what this is going to do is help to bring down those dew points. Now, we'll move this ahead into time. What is this going to look like on radar? Um, again, here's that storm system with that front. Uh, pretty pretty big storm system up into Canada. Not a lot of it really impacting the lower 48. Uh, again, some of it here getting down into portions of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Iowa, like we showed on the last map. Um, but uh, again, not expecting too much severe weather from it. It looked like it maybe a couple days ago, but now it looks like more just showers than anything, but that swings on through here. Uh, and eventually, again, that front kind of swinging down with it. Uh, we will see some rain out of this into the Northeast. This is Sunday evening into Monday, some showers and maybe even a couple rumbles of thunders, uh, thunder, not thunders, sorry, <laughs> uh, rolling on through that region as this front kind of swings on through. Uh, and uh, eventually gets back off the Atlantic seaboard. But notice here, this is going to get into the southeast. We might not see rain out of it, uh, but notice how this trough kind of extends all the way down uh, like this. You'll notice kind of the kink in the isobars. This gets all the way down into the Carolinas. Uh, again, not a lot of forcing here on the southern side of this, but still um, a, a good amount of dry and cold advection that's going to try to work on in, uh, and that's exactly what happens. And then high pressure takes over, uh, and uh, we will have to watch for the northeast i will add we could see uh, a couple of flakes here we're going to see uh, a little bit of kind of this big occluded low pressure a little bit of precipitation left over so maybe a couple snowflakes here during the middle of the week into the higher terrains of vermont new hampshire and maine i wouldn't rule it out by any means um but not really a winter storm or anything that's probably even going to get a winter weather advisory uh, but again, we'll watch as that kind of swings on through and that cold pocket of air just parks itself over the northeast and even oozes down a little bit into the southeast, um, uh, especially the mid-Atlantic, I will add. Uh, and then after that, uh, we'll look at the long run, but um, there are signs maybe 10 or so days from now, another big cold front tries to sweep across the country. Uh, but again, that's a far enough uh, ways away that we're not going to really dive into it. But what we will dive into uh, is this current front. So here we go. Uh, here is uh, that uh, cold air and that storm system. This is Saturday afternoon. Again, just another way to show it to you. Uh, big low pressure here. You can see that cold air advection on the backside as uh, that fall air kind of tries to work on in. Uh, that's Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon here. Notice that blue showing up again, uh, that cold air and even those greens indicating that cold air uh, working on through through by Tuesday. Uh, and uh, again, it then just kind of parks itself over the Northeast by the middle of the week. And it's going to feel really nice, very fall-like. At the same time, though, you will notice this big ridge out West is going to warm things up big time for you folks. So uh, while we're getting nice fall weather in the East, uh, a little bit more warm and not so nice out West. Now, you're watching down here probably in the southeast wondering, well, this doesn't look necessarily very cold, and um, it won't be. I'll go ahead and tell you right now, it probably won't even really be chilly. Maybe the overnights will be a tad chilly, uh, but again, the coldest of the air really gets stuck up into the northeast. Now, the good news for us in the southeast is uh, it will be much less muggy, so it'll still feel more fall-like, and you'll notice that here uh, with our dew point map. Watch this front cross the country. 
And by the time we're into next Wednesday afternoon, uh, dew points back down into the 40s and 50s through the south up, uh, or down into the 30s and 40s up through the northeast and uh, midwest. So still fall like weather, even if it isn't quite as cold or even chilly. Uh, the mornings will get down into chilly temperatures with dew points this low. Uh, we'll have lows back down into the 50s through much of the mid-south. Uh, and highs probably only up into the 70s. But uh, again, kind of one of those air masses that is going to have big diurnal swings, just meaning cold in the morning or relatively warm in the afternoon. So uh, kind of one of those setups, I would think, uh, again, at least in the mid-Atlantic, southeast Ohio River Valley, uh, probably going to be jacket in the morning, short sleeve in the afternoon setup here uh, by the middle of next week. But the northeast, again, I mean, you might you might be able to get away with a sweater all day uh, as, uh, again, really much cooler air for you folks, especially up into New England. Uh, definitely going to get in on that cooler action. All right, uh, temperature anomaly. Again, just to show this to you really quickly, um, uh, it's uh, it's not going to be cold, except for maybe if you're in the Northeast. So this is Tuesday um, afternoon and evening. Actually, let me back this up. This is Tuesday morning. So uh, you'll notice the front crossing here, a lot of folks getting morning temperatures below average. Uh, but by the time we get to the afternoon, just due to these diurnal swings, a lot of us are kind of back to average here in the east, well above average out west as that ridge builds in. Uh, and then again, really the only cold afternoon temperatures getting locked up here into eastern Canada uh, and into the higher terrains of New England. Uh, but again, the morning lows, again, a lot more blue shows up on the map. Then we get to the afternoon uh, and you'll notice a lot more average like. So uh, this isn't going to be one of those big time cold fronts that everyone, you know, gets into and they're you know, wearing jackets and sweaters. It's not one of those kind of October fronts, uh, but it is a start, I think, back to what it should be. I mean, again, we've been well above average for a lot of us here for a while. Uh, this is really going to help to uh, make it feel a little bit more like fall. And as we go well ahead into time, we'll have to watch that sneaky ridge out west may try to move east uh, and bring uh, that warm weather back. But uh, there are signs in the long run uh, you'll notice another trough about 10 to 12 days from now showing up back over the east. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll wait and see if that kind of pans out the way some of the models show. But either way, relief from the heat east of the Mississippi, at least uh, here going into the uh, middle of next week. And uh, again, it's, it's just going to feel more fall like. So much drier air is kind of the bigger storyline, uh, although drier and cooler air, I will say, up into the northeast uh, where that upper level low really parks itself uh, and kind of anchors some of that colder air over you folks. Alrighty, again, uh, kind of stay tuned here for you folks down into Florida. Definitely going to need to watch that storm system elsewhere, uh, looking for a change to fall. Uh, with that said, though, y'all have a wonderful rest of your Friday. Enjoy it, and I'll see you all tomorrow.